okay now we will see the processes involved in month end and year end closing we have a uh, few activities here under the month end closing which you need to run every month end so that the figures can be adjusted before churning out your financial statements and roll over to the next period we have about five activities here listed so I'll tell you one by one what each activity is for and how to do the activity and secondly this is uh, year end closing this is required when you close the financial year at the end of the year so there's only one activity that you need to do when you close the year it's called balance carry forward okay I'll cover cover balance carry forward later on let me explain what is foreign currency devaluation is foreign currency devaluation is the process of uh, revaluating the in foreign currency so that you can present accurate financial statement to your stakeholders the reason why we are doing this foreign currency revaluation is because to meet the one of the important accounting principle is true value principle those who knows accounting will know what is a true value accounting true value accounting is uh, a concept whereby at any point in time the financial statements that you present to your stakeholders such as the profit and loss and balance sheet should be of true value of the company it means that both the report should reflect the true value of a business okay let me explain this using a simple example okay let me explain using this slide here what is the meaning of true value accounting bear in mind that true value accounting is also known as fair value accounting in some countries it's known as fair value accounting so either way both refers to the same concept in accounting now uh, let's say we have a company here and uh, we make a very simple balance sheet for this company there is there's only one capital and that capital has been uh, used to buy some euros there are no other entries I want to make a simple very simple balance sheet so it's not cluttered and you can easily understand the concept on the 10th of October when the company starts its business it has bought 100,000 euro using 130,000 capital that it has at the time at 130 US dollars per euro so all the 130,000 has been used up to purchase 100,000 euro that was on 10th October but on 31st October when we supposed to go prepare the financial statements it has two options to present the financial statement the first one is to present it in the normal way which very small companies uh, tend to do they don't convert or they don't value the the euro euro balance they don't value the euro balance to the prevailing market rate they just uh, use the original transaction value which is 130,000 to prepare the balance sheet which means that this means that the euro means here is that this, this value is not uh, shown in a euro dollar I mean euro currency it is actually shown in US dollars so to explain this item here we just used the word euro actually we can also say euro cash or euro balance or something like that okay so the euro balance 
that the company has on 31st October is worth 130,000 30, US dollars. This is in US dollars because we need to prepare the balance sheet in the local currency which is the US dollar. Let's assume the local currency, the company code currency is Euro. Okay, so in the normal balance sheet where the fair value accounting is not practiced, the Euro balance is shown in US dollars as per the original transaction amount which is 130 per euro and a total of 130,000 US dollars alright in fact small companies tend to do that because they don't have to worry about the actual value of a business so to keep their numbers simple they just use the original transaction value which is 130,000 US dollars but in uh, public listed companies in a uh, fairly big companies this cannot be done this cannot be done in this way because the stakeholders the shareholders will be interested to know the actual value of a company because we are talking about big big numbers here so a public listed company or even a fairly big company will be doing business in millions of dollars hence we need to adhere to certain accounting principles so so as to maintain the um, what do you call the prof professionalism of a company and also to adhere to the uh, governing governing principles in any country so what we do is that we have to find out the actual true value of a company before we present the balance sheet so in order to find this we need to convert the euro 100,000 to the prevailing market rate on 31st of October if this balance sheet is prepared on 30th October you need to use the prevailing rate on 30th October however in our example we are preparing this balance sheet on 31st October so all we need to do is to find out the euro rate on this date which is one dollar and ten cents per euro hence the hundred thousand US dollars that we are having in our hand can be evaluated only for hundred and ten thousand US dollars and not hundred and thirty thousand dollars so there is a great difference here so the difference of twenty thousand dollars is actually a loss for the company because the value of the currency the euro currency has dropped has dropped against US dollars hence we are realizing twenty thousand dollars loss here for the company okay this is like this is very similar to uh, stocks stocks that we that we ha hold for any company stocks meaning that uh, shares shares of the company if we buy it from the stock market and the value has dropped then we will be realizing some paper loss that's why this is called paper loss here because we haven't sold it yet we haven't sold the euro 100,000 or in the case of stock market until and unless we sell the stocks we will not realize whatever losses that has incurred in the price drop okay this is what we call a paper loss now based on the fair value accounting principles or true value accounting principles whatever it may be if we prepare the balance sheet the euro 100,000 can only be shown as 110,000 US dollars here alright then there will be a difference between the capital of 130 and 110,000 here because what we are showing here is 110,000 so a balance sheet will not balance unless we post the difference to a particular account that difference is considered as loss hence the $20,000 will be posted to the profit and loss account right and 
it will be shown on the credit side of the balance sheet to reduce the capital so that your credit side becomes 110,000 and the total of your debit will become 110,000 which will balance your balance sheet all right this is what a true true value accounting is this is what we are going to do in this topic here because if we have for big companies they might have not only one currency in their holding they might have a few currencies in the account so we can't be doing this one by one we can't be doing the conversion one by one okay so instead of doing it one by one SAP has provided a function for it to automatically convert all the foreign currencies into the prevailing market rate when we prepare the balance sheet and once the balance sheet is prepared on the 31st of October whatever it may be whatever date it may be the following date the losses will be reversed okay I forgot to tell you something just now in our example normally once we have prepared the balance sheet on 31st October the following day this loss will be reversed okay this loss will be reversed the postings of this loss in the profit loss account will be reversed so as to nullify the profit loss account and bring back the euro currency balance to 130,000 as it was before the reason we are doing this is because of the paper the concept of paper loss since it's just a paper loss we need to show this paper loss only during the day of balance sheet preparation and the following following day we have to clear this paper loss or remove this paper loss from our books because simply because we have not sold the euro dollars yet hence is not a realized loss this is just an unrealized loss we also call it realized and unrealized loss in a layman term this is called a paper loss but in a business term this can be called as unrealized loss it is unrealized because we have not sold the euro dollars yet therefore on the first of November which is the next day of 31st of October we have to clear this entry from our books so in order to clear we have to post some reverse postings and this loss will be cleared from the books so the euro balance will go back to 130,000 on the 1st of November our, our books will look at look like this 130,000 on the capital side and 130,000 on the debit side similarly in SAP after the automatic uh, forex revaluation is done on 31st of October it will also post some reverse postings which will be effected on the, the next day which is the 1st of November in this case to nullify the earlier postings we will see those activities in action in, in the SAP screen